Michael Bruce, we have uh, heard a lot of fairly high profile venture capitalists, Vinod Khosla, mm -hmm. John Doerr, in recent months, suddenly become fascinated with clean tech, renewable energy, etc. Do you find that they are already well aware of the role to be played by government agencies like DOE or NSF, or are you having to do a little bit of an educational effort? I definitely say there's an education going on. Uh, the IT uh, venture capital boom that we saw back in the 90s, really the uh, venture capital mantra was government just leave us alone and let us do our thing. Energy is completely different. Uh, there's so many permitting issues. Government owns a lot of the intellectual property from 30 years worth of DOE investment and R&D through the national laboratories. Um, and there's also a lot of incentive issues. Uh, whereas IT was largely about a value-added product, um, there's a commodity uh, that you're playing with in energy. You've got to compete with the incumbents, and uh, certainly government's got a role to play in incubating those technologies and creating market pull. Now you mentioned the changing role from, say, the technology incubator model to the entrepreneur in residence. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that within DOE, a lot of people are becoming uh, comfortable with the idea of entrepreneurs joining scientists? Uh, there's been a great um, tailwind behind the entrepreneur in residence effort. Uh, pretty much everyone around the building realizes that the status quo simply wasn't moving the technologies to market fast enough and that we needed to innovate um, our practices as well as innovate our technologies. So uh, the secretary and the assistant secretary has given us a uh, very broad authority to go out there and try new methods. The entrepreneur in residence is really taking a page out of the playbook of Silicon Valley who's used this at universities historically very successfully and we're just trying to apply it to the federal model. Now, DOE organizations like uh, Sandia, who have worked with, say, Kratas in the past, mm -hmm. tend to follow models such as like uh, materials, thin film sciences, and of course that's interesting for solar PV, but sure. can this be applied upwards into areas like wind generation and biomass? Absolutely, particularly when you're talking about uh, the resiliency of materials. Certainly mm -hmm. one of the big issues in wind is the O&M cost. So being able to have materials that won't degrade over time in harsh environments with very strong uh, loads is going to be critical going forward. And also just taking pieces out of the puzzle. If you're removing parts, I mean less O&M. So the labs certainly have a place to play in wind. But I think where you really start to see uh, materials play a role is in efficiency. Uh, historically, efficiency hasn't been a design criteria for most of our um, either industrial or built environment, and that's changing. And you're starting to see more and more people adopt smart materials um, that will allow them to consume less energy as the engineers use that as a design characteristic. You mentioned the um, National Nanotechnology Initiative and the five centers of excellence DOE has kind of pulled together. Have they aided in kind of uh, centralizing focus at areas like uh, Sandia, Los Alamos, and then are gone. Is, is it helped things? I, I certainly believe so. I can't say I spent too much time uh, at those centers of excellence, but every time I go to a national laboratory, they, they certainly show them off. One of the uh, important roles government can play in advancing technologies is building the lab equipment that simply is uneconomical for the private sector to build. Uh, their user facility, someone might use it, you know, 10% annually. It doesn't make for, sense for them to build it, but uh, as a shared resource for the nation, uh, it's certainly an important government. Well, Michael Bruce, thank you for your time. This is Loring Werbel with the EE Times Market Intelligence Unit, and we appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm.